everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley, and I was just recently working on getting some bases ready for the miniatures. You know, the day before, Gabe, you always have to get your miniatures painted and, and based up, and uh, yeah, I'm just like everybody else. So I was working on putting bases on a bunch of my miniatures, about 17 that I wanted to get done, actually closer to 20. But anyway, um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to once again talk a little bit about the plastic bases and how we use them. Uh, so if you guys aren't familiar with the clear bases that we use, they look a little something like this. So check that out. And one of the big reasons why I like clear bases is because they always kind of fit where you are when this character is standing on the sidewalk. Well... They're obviously standing on the sidewalk. They don't have flowers and rocks and dirt all around their feet. They actually look like they fit in the terrain. When they're on the, on the road, they're on the road. When they're in their back of a, of a truck, you know, that's what they're in. When they go inside a, a building, you know, that's where they're at. When they go inside the diner, look at that. They're inside the diner. So it's, for me, because we play in so many different settings... It just makes sense, and not just for this, but because one week we might be in Africa or a jungle setting, and the next week we might be in Mexico, or we might be in Egypt, or we might be in Singapore, you know. And you can't really just do a base that go, oh, well, uh, this base will fit everywhere because that was something that kind of when Mila and I were starting to work on Pulp Alley that we kind of ran into and, and thought, well, what are we going to do? And she's the one that actually convinced me to try out using these clear plastic bases. And uh, when she first started doing it, she was cutting out circles with a little pair of scissors and gluing them on the bases. And I am really glad that she did it because it convinced me to go ahead and move forward with it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start this video and it's going to actually walk through uh, putting bases on about 19 different miniatures. So one of the first things we do is we use a, a set of toenail clippers. And one of the reasons why we use toenail clippers is because the angle of cut that it is a, a straight cut rather than a scissor cut. So it pushes down evenly across it, basically all at once, or, or uh, a really nice cut instead of, you know, just trying to scissor it out off of there. And it just works a lot nicer. If you find a good pair of toenail clippers, don't cheap out on them. Nice heavy duty, you know, with good uh, metal on them, and they're nice and sharp. Boy, those things just do awesome job. We put a little bit of glue on there. I had not intended to use uh, gel glue, but it happened to be the, the uh, super glue that I opened up. So I put a little dab of super glue, uh, two little good dabs, just one on each foot, and then put it down and then immediately use the accelerator uh, or the activator uh, to, to then set the uh, the super glue. So here I am using the uh, accelerator, the activator on there. Um, I think I got a little bit of super glue under the base on that one. I'm not sure, but maybe I did. There you see another angle. Uh, yeah, I think it tries to like stick to the cardboard there a little bit. You know, it's just one of those things. The foot was really right at the edge of the base. I like using 20 millimeter bases because it, it keeps the, the base nice and small rather than those big honking bases. You know, when you're playing and you're trying to fit uh, models in a vehicle, you're trying to fit models in a building, it just works so much nicer when you have small bases instead of those big, you know, 25 or 30 millimeter bases. But a lot of our figures now we actually ship with 25 millimeter bases because that's what people like. That's what we can actually find and, and get. So, uh, but when I do them for our games, I actually use 20 millimeter bases on anything that will fit. So here I am uh, putting another mini on there using the uh, accelerator there to put a little drop on both feet to get that to try and set up. 
And then I'm kind of placing them off to the side a little bit so they're out of the way. So we're going to do 19 of these. You might as well sit back and relax and enjoy the, the thrill and excitement. Here I am snipping off the bases. Now the, the little tab at the bottom. Now once in a while I have a file, a metal file sitting out there. And once in a while, there you go, I drag that across the, um, drag that across the base there just so that it uh, makes sure it's nice and flat. Also because I want to... Um, I want to make sure that the paint is off of the bottom of the where I want to put that contact directly onto the um, onto the plastic. I want to glue metal to plastic, not paint. I don't want to glue the paint to the to the metal because that's not really a strong bond. Here I am chopping off another one, so this is going into it. And so you can compare this, and gosh, another reason why I really like using this this technique is because it's so fast and easy, and I get the bases done. I used to I used to really dread doing bases. I'd get the miniatures painted, and then I was like, oh, now I got to go back and do all the bases. <laughs> but yeah, with this, every base takes me, uh, you know, a little less than a minute to, to actually knock it out and get it done. So it's just like hardly any time at all, you know, knock out the, the bases on five miniatures in, you know, under five minutes easily uh, and have them, have them done. And not only do, is it fast and easy, but I just, I like the way it looks on the table as well. I think if if I didn't really like the way it looked, I probably wouldn't do it. You know, regardless of how easy it was, because really, you know, you could just stick them in the pla the black, you know, plastic bases that they come with a slot of bases. Stick those out there and say there, they're they're done. Uh, but I really do like the aesthetic of the clear plastic bases. We finally had one pop off, and we've had a few pop off through the years, but we've never had one pop off, you know, during one of our live games. And we've done, you know, gosh, tons of live games, you know, right here. And we finally had one pop off uh, just a week or so ago. And what did we do? Oh, no, we just glued it back on. It spent, you know, spent no time at all. Two drops of super glue, a little bit of accelerator, and you and it's done, and it's back on there, and it's back on the table, and it's playing. You know, no time at all to get it fixed. So that one needed a little extra filing on the bottom there. So I've I've done videos about how to make these plastic bases that I'm using at home. So if you guys would like to try using the types of plastic bases that I use. Um, they really are not available anywhere else. This is really a, a pulp alley thing. Um, and it really does make sense for pulp gaming because we go to so many different settings. If I was playing, you know, uh, in Normandy or if I was playing the Africa camp campaign or if I was playing, you know, Ancients or whatever, um, uh, then chances are uh, the, the sorts of terrain that my miniatures are going to be in is, you know, isn't really that broad. So I could just, you know, make my characters for, you know, if I was doing a World War II figures, then just make them for, you know, a World War II setting, you know. Um, and then and just go with that same way if I was doing Africa Corps. Uh, then, yeah what would be the point of doing the clear bases? Uh, then in that situation, maybe it would even look a little bit nicer to do the nice decorated bases, the nice picture frame bases with tufts on it and stuff like that. I think those bases look really cool. And if I was going to do a miniature for a magazine, if I was going to do a miniature for a miniatures contest or something like that where... We're, it was just the focus of the miniature, then, yeah, I'd put it on a fancy schmancy base because, you know, that's what you do. But as a gamer and because we play, I want miniatures that work best for gaming, not for presentation. Clear bases look 
oh so cool, I think, for, clear, for, for gaming. And right here, I would probably say that you, everybody should really use the sorts of bases that they like, right? You should use the sort of bases that you like. Don't, don't think I'm trying to convince you to use these, but if, if it is something that you have been considering, maybe this will give you that little boost of confidence to go ahead and try it. But, you know, if you, if you prefer having the big bases, then there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that is cool. That that's, that's what you like, then you should do that. So we're starting on another group of figures here. Look at that bottom of that foot. Really, really silvery there. So that, that way I know it's nice and clean. And I'm going to snip the, the little tabs off of, I guess, about six or so of these, uh, these mercenary-style characters that I have here. These were painted up just recently by Thomas and uh, did a really, really nice job on it, so I was really happy with that. I like using the uh, nail clippers. I think they work really good. I, I really don't like normal hobby clippers, uh, so... Uh, you know, it is what it is. But some folks just use hobby clippers, too. And uh, so it makes a really nice flat cut. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, edge to it. It just really snips really good. Um, and then each of these, kind of rubbing it across that metal file. You can find metal files anywhere. Um, they're pretty nice to have for this sort of stuff. And just kind of scraping them across the bottom of that, their, their feet across the, that file just to take off any paint that might be lingering down there to make sure I'm getting that metal contact with the plastic. So uh, as far as what all do I use, uh, as far as equipment for this, uh, I use that metal file. You've pretty much seen everything I use. The metal file, uh, a super glue. It really doesn't matter if you're using gel or just regular super glue. Whatever you're using is fine. Uh, whatever brand you use is fine. Um, I use the accelerator. Let me show you the accelerator that I use. I'll actually get a picture of that. All right, so this is the accelerator that I use right here. It is called Instaset, right there. And uh, it comes in this spray bottle, but I do not use it as a spray. I think that's kind of goofy. So I put it into a uh, little dropper bottle. Just put uh, one little drop on there on each spot that I want to set, and that's... Uh, those are the those are the couple of things that I use uh, pretty regular when I'm using uh, super glue. Okay, start the video back up. What do you guys think? Uh, leave me some comments down below. Uh, while you're at it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and the little bell icon as well, so you get a notification when we upload a new video. That's pretty handy. All right, so now uh, gluing some of the uh, mercenaries down. Yep, gluing some of them down here. So just one little dot. Don't get carried away with the super glue. Very little amount will go a long way. So just one little dot on each foot and put the... Uh, Put the uh, accelerator on there, and, and you know, you're almost always just good to go. Once in a while, it'll be a little bit of wobble. Hold it for a couple more seconds, and then you're done, you know. It's just not a big deal. Now, there was a time when I was concerned about the way that super glue would fog up the plastic. You don't have any fogging issue if you're using the Instaset, the accelerator with your super glue. Just... That it just doesn't happen. So, uh, but again, don't use a lot of super glue when you're doing it. One little dot on each foot, put it on there, dot, dot with the accelerator, and, and you're done. 
and you move on to the next one. So that's a that's a fairly is that all of them? I guess I got another one there to do. So those are uh, this is how I do bases. You know, how do you guys do your bases? Let me know. Um, I think if you did a, a if you did a, a single setting, maybe even like a like a western, maybe that wouldn't be too big of a deal to just use clear bases or to just use you know decorative bases uh, if for something like that. Clear bases are definitely not for everybody. Uh, I think there are some some things that you have to kind of get used to on it. But anybody that tells you that they're hard to play with, all you got to do is watch the tons of live videos that we do. Every single week we are playing with these bases. Uh, no issues at all. Um, it, just, it just works really, really nicely. Uh, because I use the smaller bases, you know, you, you could say maybe sometimes there's a balance issue, um, but very rarely is there a balance issue. Um, I was looking at some of the terrain recently, like a rocky hill, and maybe if, if the, using those uh, big, like, uh, slotted bases, actually have a space underneath there where it's a little bit of a gap. So that might actually hold you on the hill a little bit better when it, the hill isn't very level or it's kind of uneven and things like that. You def definitely don't want to use these kind of bases on teddy bear fur or things like that. They're just not really going to work for that. They do make the miniatures just a little bit more top heavy because the, the base really has almost no weight whatsoever. Even the slotted bases don't have much weight, but at least they have a little bit more than these Inviso bases do. That's something that we really do like about them. We like the fact that they are about as invisible as you can get right now anyway with our current technology. Maybe we'll get true invisible bases sometime later. Um, but I think it's cool. I think it's cool that the miniature actually feels like it's in the terrain that it's supposed to be in rather than having a big lump of ground and, and grass and flowers and skulls and a boulder and, you know, different things that you decorate bases with and then put that in the middle of your diner. You know, and go, okay, well, now this character's in the diner. And I think war gamers, you know, we typically have uh, some sort of, it's almost like a sense of clutter blindness where we really just ignore the bases after you've been doing the hobby for, you know, 30 some odd years or so. You just don't really pay attention to the bases, right? That's what we do. But then when wives or friends look at the table and they go, well, why are you standing in the in there when you have all that stuff all over the base? It doesn't really fit the terrain, you know. Other folks definitely see it. This is the last batch here. Of course, this is Galgo's uh, project. Galgo, Galgo, and her dancers here finishing those up. So there they are. There they are. All all. Uh, I guess it's worth pointing out that that video was not cut down for length there was nothing chopped out of that video so what you saw there was attaching those 19 or so bases in the actual amount of time that you watched it so here is uh, Mac O'Reilly on different pieces of train he's standing on the roof well you see the black tar paper or under his feet you know there he is standing in the road and it just looks like he's standing in the road he doesn't have flowers and rocks and things like that all around him. So yeah, pretty excited with the way the clear bases work. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. Uh, make sure you hit that uh, like and the, hit the bell. And we will see you next time. Bye, everybody.